Hey, this is Danny. The channel is You and Me Living Free, and today I'm going to talk about Travel Day. It I took basically kind of three short days to get to Padre. I went from KC to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City to Austin with a pit stop in Waco, and then Austin to um, Padre Island by Corpus Christi. And so I'm going to take you through the first um, couple days until the second night when we are in Austin and what I learned along the way and um, little stories here and there. So I'm going to, this is my intro. I'm going to take you through that. And I just want to say, you know, um, travel days are not my favorite. I'm going to put up a picture right here. And it's one of the things I forgot to put in my last video about how I prepped for this whole trip in like a day and a half. And so I, I have this little list and it breaks down my trip in all these short little jaunts. So I can put how far it is from Austin to Waco. I may not stop in Waco and then stop in Austin, but I know how far it is. So it just gives me flexibility. Like you, you may have heard me say before, when I'm doing traveling or when I'm on the road at all, uh, or when I'm in a place, really my whole plan for life is like, have a plan, but be flexible. Have a plan, but be flexible. Do your research, Danny, because I'm not a planner by nature. But that is my whole, my new strategy now, the new me. Uh, I do plan a lot more because I have to on the road. And because there are a lot more different and changing elements that are in play, you know, when you're living your normal life every day, you, you, you know, you kind of know the weather, you kind of know where you're going, you kind of know potential challenges that you might face or whatever. When you're on the road, it's, it's a lot more up for grabs. So a lot more research and everything is needed. So here's my little sheet and it shows how far and how many miles it is to every little place so that I have options because I hate feeling like I don't have any options. I don't like feeling like I have to do this today and have it be a great big goal. I love the feeling of I'm going to make it to here and then if I feel like it, I can go to here and having those options just makes me feel more in control. It makes my travel days suck less. <laughs> if I can have a little more control, right? So what else did I do? I have a brand new audiobook. I finished an audiobook and then started a new one. So when I'm listening to an audiobook, when I'm driving monotonous drives, um, I don't listen to an audiobook if I'm driving through the Rocky Mountains. But when I'm driving across Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas, oh, it's a good time for an audiobook. <laughs> Because it's not that exciting, although Texas did have plenty of traffic, uh, but we'll talk about that later. So, uh, good stuff. Got a new audiobook, and it's an audiobook I knew I would like because it's Madeline Miller, and I just read within the last year or so, I read Song of Achilles, which is awesome. And anybody who's into kind of mythology and that whole stuff, uh, I would say read it. My book club read it, and so I read it. And then I wanted to go back and read Madeline Miller's first book or the book that preceded it, which was called Circe, and I never did. So I, it was an audio book that I was looking forward to listening to, and so I saved it for my trip because I don't like travel days, and it was something to look forward to and something to kind of keep me occupied. So that's a strategy that works for me, having options. Also, another thing I gotta say, is traveling now in late March when there is so much more daylight than a couple of months ago when it was uh, when it was dark at five o'clock or 530 and then you're just stuck the whole night I don't drive at night so it's so it's so nice for me to have the option to drive a little bit later in the day and to take my drive slower and not pressure myself at all, but to drive a little later in the day knowing that I have plenty of daylight left and I don't have to rush to get someplace or anything like that. So that's also helping me this time around. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Let's look at uh, Oklahoma City and um, yeah, let's do it. My first stop in o Oklahoma was Oklahoma City Bass Pro Shop. And I went here because I thought about staying overnight here, but Iovalander had conflicting reports about whether 
it was okay to spend the night or not and whether there were signs for no parking. But one thing they could all agree on is that there was a trail right there behind Bass Pro that was fun to walk on. It has this great sculpture of, you know, people moving out west and, and the cowboys and the kind of wagon train there. And so this sculpture was several, several, many, many pieces and went on for quite a ways. And this was a great little walk because one of the things I'm really trying to do is, especially on travel days, I'm trying to make sure that I get some steps in because sitting behind the wheel all day, not only does it kind of make me grouchy, but it makes me feel even worse because I'm not moving around at all. So I almost am starting to look at it, not almost, I am starting to look at it as taking care of myself when I give myself a little more time on my journey, on my travel days, and make sure I stop to take care of myself. And one of the things I do when I take care of myself is go for a little walk. This was probably a mile or so. It was literally like I was out there walking for maybe 25 minutes or so. There were a lot of other people on this little paved trail as well. As I said, it is right next to the Bass Pro, so it was easy to get to. Pretty close to downtown Oklahoma, but it was a Saturday afternoon, so I didn't really have to worry about traffic or anything. But it was delightful. I'm glad I did it, and I would definitely do it again. When I finished here, I drove further south on I-35 down to outside the real the loop of the city of Oklahoma City, and I went to um, Norman, Oklahoma, and I stayed at their Cracker Barrel. So one of the things on my little list that I showed you in the first part of the video where I write cities and how many miles and how many hours to get there is I put if there's a Cracker Barrel in the city or not. Every single city on my list this time, every possible stopping point has a Cracker Barrel. I love it when that happens. So I was at Cracker Barrel each night um, on my way out to Padre. This is my dinner this night, and I have a tendency when I'm on the road to kind of eat like crap. I've already shared before that I like McDonald's breakfast on travel days because I don't want to cook something, clean up my mess, and then get on the road. I like to uh, just get out there, so that helps me. But I love these little salads. They're only like under $4. They're at Walmart, and um, and I... I adore them. So I had the whole thing for dinner. Sometimes I'll just eat half of it and save the other half. But tonight I ate the whole thing for dinner and it was delicious. And here's us the next morning and we are headed into Texas. I was looking for a welcome to Texas sign because this is right when I crossed the border, but there was no welcome to Texas sign. I was so surprised. But anyway, um, maybe it blew over in a storm or something. Anyway, so we're on, we're in Texas. We're headed for Austin. I did some research. I decided to stop at Mayfield Park. It's outside the city. I didn't necessarily want to go right through downtown or anything. So this is on the loop outside the city. And it was like 86 degrees. So I liked that this was nice and shady. So my goal is just to get to a park like I did in Oklahoma City, like I did here. Just get someplace where I can get out of the van, where I can walk for maybe a mile or so. That's just a nice little minimum. Get out, stretch my legs so that I'm not all cooped up. It, get, it lets me release the tension and everything from the drive all day and do something nice for myself. And so this was just a nice little stroll. They had a trail and then they had this little garden. I'm sure the little garden looks even better when it's a little later in the year and more of the flowers are blooming and stuff. But it was a nice little stop. We can see the peacocks here um, and these gorgeous flowers. They might, they might have been some kind of lilac tree, but anyway, that, that smelled so good. I wish, they, I wish we had smell-o-vision video. Here's what I should have done, though. Instead of going to Mayfield, I should have skipped it and just gone to downtown Austin. Anyone who's ever been to Austin will already know this, but if you have not gone, then do yourself a favor not only is downtown just gorgeous, cool and fun to look at, neat lines, cool architecture, um, 
artwork um, spray paint here and there like it has so much character and so much coolness this is just me driving to try to get to planet fitness <laughs> um, so I'm driving I stop at Mayfield to do my exercise then I'm going to planet fitness for my shower and I happen to hit this part of downtown and I'm like I should have been on this trail all along. It goes across the bridge, across the water. There were a ton of kayakers and and canoe, people on canoes and stand up paddle boards and everybody was out on the water. Everybody was out here. It was getting close to sunset on a Sunday night. It was just so full of life and good energy and awesomeness that I really wish I had taken the time and gone for a walk there. It was so busy though, I couldn't even find a parking place by the time I got here. But I'm telling you, I'll be back to Austin for sure. I'll be back and hopefully maybe even on my way home this time I might spend a night there and just spend a day or an afternoon, have a picnic lunch, go for a nice long walk along the water and along this uh, Ladybird Trail. I loved it. I love you, Austin. Until next time. And thank you. If you are still watching, then I love you. You made it to the end of another video. I will be back more with, I'll be back next time with more. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.